Um, I'm not quite used to public speaking, and I'm a little nervous, so no making fun of me. Um, is um is it gonna show up on the no? Okay. So if <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to flip through the pages of Loose Leaf Volume Three, um, I have an artwork in there. It's called The Story of a Childhood. Um, it consists of um, it, it's a it's a photo documentation of a sculpture I did a couple of years ago, um, and it's a bunch of I'm if you're looking at it like good, but if you're not like it might seem redundant. Okay, yeah, I'll hold it up. Hold it up. So, newspaper is laid out on the ground. Um, a lot of them are made into objects of play. So, like a like paper hat, or like a fortune teller, or paper airplanes, like one of which I brought here with me today. Um, yeah, it, it examines privilege, I think, was the main goal of it. Um, my practice in general focuses a lot on like self introspection, um, and it's not something I usually talk about with like this piece specifically. But considering everything that's been going on in the states as of recently with like the Muslim ban, et cetera, and all of the Islamophobia, I feel like it's appropriate to say it now. Um, it's actually a response to um, Marjan Satrapi's Persepolis. I don't know if any of you are familiar with that graphic novel. <laughs> um, she made that graphic novel in 2000, and it documented her childhood growing up during the Iranian Revolution of 1979. Um, and I figured the only accurate way to respond to a powerful work like that was to think about my own childhood. So if we take Marjan Chatrapi as an example, um, and if you, if you read the graphic novel, we see that um, Satrapi witnessed a lot of horror throughout her younger years. So like relatives were being arrested, um, neighborhoods were being bombed around her, um, and people she knew were being murdered because of all the conflict that was going on um, during that time. So I thought about my own childhood and I kind of realized that I lived a really privileged life of relative peace um, in which I was thinking about all of like the true hallmarks and like important events that really shaped the 21st century thus far um, and thinking about how when I was younger, when it was happening, I didn't really care. And they say that, you know, like children are like young and innocent, they're not supposed to really like have to be invested in these issues. But as you can see, in countries that are still in development and in countries where there's a lot of conflict like that, it becomes a case of privilege, really. Um, so, yeah. Um, the main goal of it was to take newspaper articles of historical events that I personally remember. So I chose three. Um, I chose 9-11, I chose the SARS outbreak in Toronto, I think it was in 2005, and I chose Hurricane Katrina. And each one of those memories and cultural events were things I definitely remember. It's like I remember where I was when I heard about 9-11. Like I was in a van with my father waiting to pick up my sister from a soccer practice. You know, I remember um, hearing teachers talk about how they were gonna donate to the Hurricane Katrina Relief Fund. And I remember my mother telling me not to touch any pole around me just because like the SARS outbreak in Toronto was like big. But I didn't care. I mean, I was super young. I, I blissfully like flew over my head, so I really wanted to take these objects of news and culture and turn them into objects of play. Um, I think that's pretty much all I have to say about the artwork. If you haven't picked up a copy yet, I do strongly <laughs> encourage you to do so. It's beautiful. I was just given my free one um, <laughs> a few minutes ago, so um, and from what I've seen so far, it's like really beautiful and Project 40 Collective has been super amazing with everything that they do, not just loose leaf. Um, and 
I thank them for the opportunity to be published in this publication. <laughs>